Hello, my name is Nikki Emilike, CEO of Nisden College. Welcome to Centerpoint Africa with Nikki. This program is centered on education, international politics, community development, business, and many more. We have exciting guests here, but I'll let our first guest introduce himself. Chief, please introduce yourself. Thank you very much, Nikki. Uh, my name is Chief Barrister Alex Koka Ezemakam Akajugo. Akajugo. <laughs> that's, that's my title, thank you. Well, tell us about your career, Chief. I am a, a barrister uh, and a lawyer, and um, I'm also pretty much my entire career has always been surrounded around property, real estate. I'm a licensed realtor in the United States of America, in Georgia. Wow. And I also work here as a lawyer, and I practice also in Nigeria. So, so that's, that's in, a, in a nutshell what I do. I do also consultancy work, but uh, of all these, the one that I enjoy most yes. is actually my activities with my community. Um, that's what I enjoy most. Okay, tell us about your leadership and your, and I know you're a chairman of a big massive organization, so tell us about those. Oh, thank you very much, Nikki. Um, I, by the spiritual grace of God, I am the leader first of, or president of Orkeja UK. Um, this is my community association. And also, the leader of Council of Igbo Communities in the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland. And CIC for short is the umbrella organization that looks after all the organizations in the UK, town unions, uh, community associations, social clubs, all these organizations are in the UK. Whatever there are issues that they have, uh, CIC is where they come to. Um, CIC is also heavily involved in uh, a resolution or dispute, or rather dispute resolutions. In fact, um, as a matter of fact, as you are, you are very much aware, <laughs> yes, we I had launched our, our, um, our constitution that guides or should guide every organization here on the best practices so that uh, to avoid or to minimize, not completely to avoid, but to minimize all the conflicts that happens within organizations. Uh, so that's what CIC predominantly does. But I'm also, by virtue of being the leader of CIC in the UK, I'm also the deputy leader of European Igbo Council, EIC. Under that auspices, I attend meetings in all over Europe. The last one we had was in Holland, in okay. The Hague. Uh, in there, we had all the leaders of the worldwide. We had eminent individuals from the USA, from entire Europe. They attended, and a lot of things that are uh, to the benefit of your Uyghur communities are discussed, and, and more importantly, the people in the diaspora. As well. so, so when you say Igbo community, yeah, um, tell us what Igbo community stands for because a, a lot of our viewers would want to know, you know, when you say Igbo community, you know, what does that mean? Okay, now, the Igbo are from predominantly from the southeast region of Nigeria. Yes. And I'm from there. And they are, and we are, the most traveled people in the entire country. Yes, we are. Every country you go in this planet Earth, uh, as an ad day they say, there's always an evil man. There. An evil man. And, and you, woman. Yes, absolutely. You're right. <laughs> And, and if you go there, you find no evil man or no evil woman. Yes. And you're in there for business, carry your bag, carry your money, turn around, get into the airport, and leave. Uh, because um, wherever Igbo people go, they develop, we develop. We, we don't have, wherever we go, we call home. 
And so that is part of our culture. And because we are very nomadic in yes. terms of where we, we, we are very, all over the world, yes, we are. It, it bodes that um, organizations are set up you know, like our, our people, Sonia and one near, do of not course. leave your brother behind. Yes. So wherever we are, we bring our brothers and sisters together. Even in Nigeria, you have diasporas within Nigeria. Yes, you have we diasporas do. all over. Diasporas and so, all over. Um, it's really great to be a lead, to be leading our people. And so, in the midst of all that and all that greatness, you have issues of governance, issues of conflicts within the communities. Yes, we do. So Council of Hebrew Communities, especially in the UK, is designed specifically to resolve those issues. And also to speak of when um, things that affect our people are concerned. Right. Well, thank you very much. Um, thank you. I know you are the leader of CIC. And um, tell everyone um, when, how do we then, anyone that want, is interested to join CIC, um, what's the process in regards to joining? Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for that beautiful question, Nikki. Um, Council of Hebrew Communities in the UK um, mm. have several tiers of membership. Of course. Now, primarily, the very first tier is all organizations in the UK should by right yes. be members of CIC. So such organizations are town unions, of course, community associations, yeah. local government unions, social clubs, and all other organizations. Wherever you have more than one Igbo person. Yes congregating together yeah. as an organization yeah. in the UK, and I have a name, they should be part of this organization. But this is the first tier. The second tier of membership is when we have um, people that can have special value that can add to, yes. the, to the promotion. Someone like you, for instance, you, you're, you're one of our patrons, so you have a unique yes. value you brought to CIC. And so such uh, membership are open, but it's highly controlled. We, we're very strict in terms of who comes in, because when they come in, we put them at a very high level to be able to contribute to the um, to development of peace, unity, and, uh, and love and co proper cohesion within the cohesion within our communities. Mm -hmm. And so the final tier is people that are here yeah. from anywhere else, anywhere outside the UK that yeah. would like to be part of us and mm -hmm. they feel what we're doing, they love it, is part of what they like. We'd be more than happy to have them, but obviously we will have to vet them to make sure that they are who they say that they are and oh, they yeah. will contribute what they say they can yeah contribute. we do know screening is really important yeah. so um what is the next level for cic in the next five years what are your projections in regards to where cic will be and um and in regards to implementing different strategies yeah thank you very much um CIC, we have a, a strategic plan, a very clearly yes. defined strategic plan for CIC. And this has been on work for a very long time. Uh, we've been working on this for quite a while. But the very first um, plan we have on the table, um, when I joined CIC oh, for many years now, quite a few years, and, and I became a leader now for about two years, one of the thing, things I, I observed is conflicts within our communities. Of course. Now, these conflicts uh, and proliferation of new organizations. So when people have election, for instance, and one person expects to win, and if yeah. they don't win, they go away and set up another, another union, or call it Union ABC. 
So this has been ongoing for a very long time, and it kind of splinters our people. So we're not working together in cohesion. Yeah. And because of this, uh, our development is limited. For instance, um, when I joined CIC, one of our first agenda was to look at how we can put money together to buy Ibo House in London, a building that can be dedicated um, for our people to use. Yeah. Now, I realize that a lot of organizations, there's many organizations, but they don't have enough um, resources on their own to actually buy this building. C can I say something in regards to this? Sure. Um, do you think the reason being is because we're not implementing much strategy um, we're in a foreign country and we're not able to, you know, create enough strategical plan hmm. to embed in regards to doing this. Do you think that's what the problem is? That's part of the problem. That's part of the problem. Uh, that's part of the problem. There are several reasons, but that's a very strong part of the reason, uh, lack of clear strategy. Absolutely. Lack of clear strategy. Yeah, absolutely. But more importantly, yeah. the numbers game yeah. is where we play here. Of course. I mean, if we have 200 organizations in the UK, yes. every single one of these organizations have a bank account. Yes. They have some money, they live with their members. Each one of the organizations membership may be 30 or 40 or 50. Yes. And they leave their members five pounds a month or ten pounds a month. Yeah. Now, you work that out, and from that money, they look after their members who dies. They they look after the the, the bereaved members, uh, those that have children. They pay them. They pay some benefits to members from the money they contribute. So at the end of the day, there's not enough money for them to even strategically plan to own a home, a, a, house, a building, or do anything substantial. So my, my major objective, and this is really what I, I hope to work on and what I'm working on at the moment, is that in the next five years, yes. within the next five years, we start merging some of these organizations together. Okay into super organizations because when they march together the resources are pulled together raising money to do anything will be a whole lot easier because the numbers game um if for instance in london like in my local government yeah in our local government um there's a th there are about 21 to 28 towns yeah. Towns, major yeah. towns, or 30 major towns. Every single one of these towns have their own town union here. There's nothing stopping us from having one okay. super... We need to really repeat that. <laughs> because everyone needs to know that uh, the situation right now. So you're saying yes. you have 28 local there's one local government. Okay. Nigeria has 728 local, local governments government. in entire Nigeria. Okay. In, in, in my own state, Anambra yeah. state. Yeah. And in my local government, you have Ihala local government. Yeah. There's more than 28 town, towns in Ihala local government. And each one of those towns, each Every single one of those towns have a union in the UK. Very important. Very, very important. This is where the numbers matter. Yes. And it's about trying to make sure that these members come together and join in regards to making whatever the targets that they're reaching Absolutely. and they want to reach yes absolutely happen yeah right so yeah. i think do you think that education has something to do with it as well you couldn't ask me about the point <laughs> education is paramount 
but more importantly, like this is where needs in college comes in, in terms of what what you do, you bring these yes. people, people in, yes. and, and and how they um, to interact with each other. Yes, because sometimes we just do not know that we have the power. Mm. And that power resonates in us coming together and creating different types of targets for ourselves mm. and, and making sure that those targets are right. done. Yeah. The most important, you know, because most of the time we have these targets everywhere and yes. we end up not implementing it, not creating that awareness we want to create. Mm. Um, and sometimes we're expecting so much within this little time frame, little organizations, and yes. end up not doing much about it. Yeah. So, literally, you know, just carry on. Didn't want to stop and you then there. We, <laughs> uh, we, we then on that sheet, just take on from where you, we know. then on that sheet because. Yes. Our potential is not being met. Yes. Absolutely, yeah. Our plan needs to be a better projection in yes. regards to targets, yes. yearly targets, yes. and then we can then, you know, then divide those targets into monthly targets Yes. to make sure we reach the yearly targets. Yes. And this is where we find it very difficult because there's not much objective, mm. there's not much aim, mm. and, you know, we end up coming together and you know and not really achieving what we want to achieve and that is our main aim yes. our main aim is to make sure that we're gathering we're gathering yes we're always gathering yes. but what is the gathering for for yes so yes. this is areas that we really need to improve yeah. as organizations so mm -hmm. carry on <laughs> so what cic is trying to do in the uk is to find yeah the strategy that works best yes. for, um, you know, there's an adage that says, Nane so Ibu so. Achibu achi. That basically translates yeah. as a leader, you lead from behind, you don't lead from the front. You follow the Ibu's and they do what, because he was a very Republican. Yes, they, they you can't. Con you don't control evil person. Every man is a king in his own house. That's, that's how our culture is. So, but we still have to achieve what we... A king in his house, but not a king outside. And a the king in his in house in achieves his own. more. And that's the thing. But because we need to also realize this. Yes. If we're trying to do certain things, we mm. need to have the skills to achieve those yes. you know we just can't come in and implement any strategy and expect everybody to be part of it yeah. so education and awareness and different types of what would I say routes to gaining uh, different skills is required absolutely I completely I completely agree with you I, I couldn't agree with you more on that on that point so um, what we are trying to do ultimately is to create this super organization. So small unions, say for if you come to any, every town, major mm -hmm. town, covals around the major town, appoint leaders that are clearly with a clear objective of what they want to achieve. Yeah. We don't want, I mean, and this is one of the issues that we had in our, our um, dispute resolution manual that we have published okay. and that is going around to all the associations in the UK. We don't want leaders for life because this kind of breeds, um, this is where, oh, if you're going to be leader for life, I want to go and set my own organization. So if you are there for two terms, maximum. So people feel part of it and then they can grow together. And when you grow together because they know Oh, I'm only going to be there for four years, and after four years, somebody else is going to come. Then I can plan. Yes. If it's one person is there for five years, ten years, fifteen years, become he assumes that he is the organization rather than the organization for him to serve. He's serving the the organization is not serving him rather than him serving the organization. Yeah. So these are part of what we are 
trying to do our strategic plan in the next five years. Also, we, we're looking at financing projects in Igbo land, southeast predominantly. Um, two, three years ago, we had an investment summit here, which kindly you were, <laughs> you were kindly part of, and we were very proud to have you um, as part of our patron and sponsor of that. Um, in that program, we had guests yes. from all over the world. We had guests from Holland, companies. Um, different companies from Holland, from UK, from Spain, from France, entire Europe, all converged in London for this summit. Yeah. Um, and they, they all came because they believe they have products and services and companies that they would like to cite in the Southeast. And we all know that South is one of the most educated yes, part is. of Nigeria. So they are happy to participate. So we're taking that on. What yes, we're doing now is we are taking it to the next level. Beyond, beyond just talking, we're getting MOU was signed on that day. On, on, yes. on that day, which you yes. were party to it. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I witnessed that. Excellent. Yes. And so we're moving forward. A company, all companies are springing up, and we're acting as a coin deed through which Western companies that have resources and they are looking for virgin markets and they're looking for uh, fertile land that can come to to the southeast and they can invest their money and bring the equipment and we can produce i mean the target ultimately is that we in the west africa and in particular nigeria and in the southeast region in nigeria yeah. should have factories large enough to produce machines uh, the highest uh, we're using the highest technologies Technology. to produce things yeah. to bring them over here and so oh. that's that's really one of one of our major objectives in having that scenario um, event yeah. two years ago. I also basically heard there has been a progress in regards to Senil. Okay. There is um, another organization created for Nigeria as well where there's some investment done as well. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. If you can tell well, us about that a little bit. Oh, I think we, there's several. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I must say there are several. There are I, several, wow. Because what it is, is when an investor who yes. has money? Um, we live in a very mature economy, so yeah. the potential to invest in new products, in new items, it's very, it's okay, but it's easier from a virgin market point of view. Okay, like what you have in Africa, in, in Africa, and in West Africa, Nigeria, and Southeast in particular. Yeah. So when they came, we were able to show them, showcase our region. Yeah. We showed them the land. It's fertile land. We showed them it's very conducive to do business in Nigeria. Yes, I it mean, is. I mean, I, I was privileged that day to yeah. spend some time explaining the legal aspect of doing business in, in Nigeria, Nigeria to, the, to the invited guests. Yeah. Although I feel that there are a lot of questions on yes. that day. Yes. Um, and so after they have seen that, they went away yeah. and met individual um Communication. The net. A lot of people were networking. Yeah. So people networked. A lot of companies went away with individuals like yourself yeah. that can um, open doors for them to come and do their business. Definitely. So yes, there's yeah. several um, companies and entities that are set up and up and running, especially in the farming sector as well. Okay. Well, thank you. We were talking to our first guest, Chief Alex, but now we've got a community leader, and I will just allow her to introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Pastor Mrs. Jessica Edmond. I'm the CEO and the founder of Women and the World, a community of women, and by default men, that has helped so many people to see themselves in someone else's story. As we share our experiences and the wisdom that addresses women and by default, again, men fear <laughs> and help them to maximize their full potentials, give them another opportunity to fulfill it and become whatever they desire to be. 
Thank you for having me on the show. Nikki? Thank you, You're Pastor Jessica. You're welcome. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you. you very much. Um, tell us what motivated you to becoming a pastor. Oh, um, <laughs> I think the, um, it's not being a pastor is yes. actually a calling. It's not about um, motivation. Okay. And uh, I think um, if you are a born pastor, you are a pastor. Okay. Even if you happen to run away from it, do everything, and uh, in most cases, you wouldn't like it. You wouldn't like to have anything to do with such name. And most times you don't even want to be called pastor. You feel okay. somehow. So I think it's a calling. It's, 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 it's a, a calling. So it's you, a calling, you were called when you were younger? You know, how did it happen? Because before you say, you know, you know, I need to, you know, educate people about God, you know, like you stated, it's a, it's a calling. Mm. So tell us, you know, what age did that come about? Yeah, um, it's two things here now. Yeah. Being a pastor is different, uh, and they're running a charity and NGO yeah. that educates women. It's mm -hmm. an entirely another thing. Yeah, that's However, fine. However, yeah, what actually in the pastors, the pastor aspect of it is that I didn't want to be. You didn't want to be, I but, want to be, but it was your be. calling. Yeah, what happened was when I was in a, in a, in university. Um, I had um, I had a business okay. called Divine Clothing, and I happened to employ some people doing it while I was in school. You know, okay. when then weekend I come back, yeah. and one of the days I came back. Well, I don't want to go into much uh, story. <laughs> but one of the days I came back, yeah. one of the guys has prophesied to somebody, okay. and the person eventually got pregnant after two months. Um, after two months, then okay. happened to bring so many other people. And by the time I come back, sometimes later, the place has turned to church every Wednesday, every Friday. Wow. And I feel this like burden to be of help. Hmm. And the one thing about that is that the guy that was working with me, the tailor, um, wasn't educated. And uh, I'm the only one that can read the Bible. Mm. Oh, teach really? Bible and mm. he was just prophesying wow. okay. and the, in less than five to six months yeah. the shop in Adenro Gulsan in Nigeria eventually turned to church yeah. which, they, which eventually become a redeemed church and they, then I had to go to Bible school Okay. I first of all went to Winners, Wolfby, back okay. home, just yeah. to get equipped and from there on and on and on mm. and eventually I was a dent and become pastor so it wasn't just my making that's yeah. how i become a pastor okay yes okay yeah. then coming to your charity women of course yeah i will digress a little bit um, okay like um, during that period then i was leading um, a group i found my myself okay. called daughters of zion okay under the same ministry okay but then i wasn't married so i called them daughters of zion but what i was doing then i didn't know actually I was actually educating people, doing it, but not with the knowledge I have now. Okay. Yeah, Great. so I ran it for some time then, eventually got married, come to UK, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but um, I didn't go home when I'm supposed to, and that was the end of... <laughs> yeah, well, now I connect with so many of them that came from Nigeria. Jerry. They joined me here. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, and some of, a lot of them are on Facebook. Mm. Then this one comes up now, yeah. uh, which we'll go into later. Okay. Uh, the women are the well. That's fine. Women. I would then want you to basically tell us about your charity. Oh. <laughs> okay, because anyway, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. right. It's right. Yeah. Actually, okay, the, when I came to UK, I yeah. came, um, it wasn't a bed of roses. Of it wasn't as I imagined, if I put it that way. So <laughs> everything Struggles. was everything was everywhere. Yes, I couldn't even um, get myself together. Um, I started having so much trouble in marriage, and the what um, um, what started it was that I didn't have child on time. Okay. So everything that goes wrong was my fault. Okay. Yeah. So it was like I'm the one, the breadwinner. I'm begging the man to stay. You know, and being a Christian, um, yeah. you will be abused, but you don't want to tell anybody. Of course. I lived in pretense for so long. My parents didn't know, nobody knew, so I was bottling it in. I didn't have opportunity to say, I can't even say it out because like in Christendom, you are not allowed to. Mm. So you just wear this kind of uh, false 
identity. Mask. Yes. Mm. When you come to church, you smile. Oh, pastor, you do good, you know, stuff like that. And when you go home, you're dying. Yeah. And I go through this for about eight years or eight oh, years. Eight years. Yes. Wow, After that was which, a long yes. time. Yes. After which, one day I remember vividly, sometimes I'll be walking on the road and I'll be just crying. I don't want to cry, but tears will be rolling, you know, um, tears all over my face. And people will be like, oh, are you okay? Are you, you know, you know how it works then. Um, one day I knelt down to God. I said, now I've been in this journey for eight yeah. years. Yeah. I've been doing everything and it's nothing like it's changing. If you could just give me a song. I know that you have so much in me for me to like give out, but I've missed it because I have a wrong marriage. Now, yes. uh, you can't be, you cannot be a pastor. You can't lead women because your own is not working. You can't give of what course. you don't have. Of so course. with that, I just judged myself that I'm not fit mm. to do it. But I said, God, if you could just give me a son, let me have something to show for this marriage, and that's that's that would be enough. Mm. That I will train this child. And uh, you, God, will deposit yes. your calling in me, yeah. in him, so that he will carry on. Yeah. I will train him to be a pastor. Yeah. And I wouldn't ask you, I wouldn't um, complain that I'm a single parent. I wouldn't ask you for help. I would do everything within my reach to make sure that I bring him up in the way of the Lord. I made a vow to God, and uh, within two weeks, less than a month, I no. Within two weeks, I saw a man in the dream. Mm -hmm. He came to give me wearing white, white mm -hmm. apparel, Love, very tall guy, very tall man, okay. and with a staff. And he came to give me a child wrapped mm -hmm. in white. Amazing. And uh, yes, after a few days, um, I start feeling funny, and I said, I said to my husband, I said, I'm pregnant. It's just like, you know, <laughs> what a foolish that wow. I've been saying it for eight years. It's not new, stuff like that. Anyway, that was, um, from that time onward, I believe that God has answered me. As the pregnancy started growing, my yeah. strength, my mm -hmm. power, my, I was being empowered. You know that mm -hmm. kind of thing? I know. Yes, mm -hmm. I now began to, you know, gather strength mm -hmm. yeah. to face my fears. I understand. To bring up, you know, and I had the baby in good faith, yeah. and uh, I called him anointed. Congratulations. Wow. Yes. Congratulations. Yes. Congratulations. That's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> Anyway, so yeah. coming to that as yeah. well, yes. as my faith begin to grow and my strength and yeah. my everything about me start changing, I went back to school, which I've um, dropped out before because I failed, mm -hmm. and I changed university, I failed again, and nothing was actually working. So this, with this strength, now I went back to school. Then, and my son was growing, I was one day studying the book of John. Yeah. Chapter mm. four. Yeah. As I was studying it, it's about a woman called the Samaritan woman. Okay. Mm. Yeah. She was begging. Jesus begged her for water, mm. and she came at the unsocial hour. In of those course. days, coming to fetch water, mm. it's the time. It's morning because of the sun. Yeah. But this woman chose to let everybody go the so that she out. can come, and of it course. was hot weather. I, according to Bible, yes. and uh, Jesus appeared even at that time when mm. nobody's expected to be there. Mm. And wow. they happened to meet with this particular woman. And the Jesus said, um, can you give me to drink? Mm. And she started making a lot of excuses. I don't want to have anything to do with you. After all, for instance, we could say, oh, you are um, a, Jew. Oh, a Jew. Then is a Jew. But now we could say, mm. oh, you are a Muslim, or oh, you are um, <laughs> Antichrist, or oh, you yeah. are whatever. Mm -hmm. We yeah. are Christians. We don't have anything in common. We can't eat ram and mm. stuff like that. Mm. And the Jesus said, if you know he that asks you, yeah. I will give you the water you will drink and you test no more. And the woman said, give me that water. I want yeah. to test it. Of course, I was accepted. And the Jesus said, go and bring your husband. She said, oh, please don't go there. I don't have anybody. I don't have husband. Jesus said, no, you've married five husbands. <laughs> and that's why you're hiding. Mm. And the one you're living with is your boyfriend. And the woman like, wow, who told you everything about me that I don't want everybody to know? A lot of us has been wearing masks, just like I was. So in that conversation, I saw myself there. I started crying. But the Bible also went further to say that the lady dropped her water pot. Mm. 
and they ran back to the city. Yeah. And if I could, by reason of meditation, I could see the water pot to be unforgiveness, mm -hmm. yeah. burden, shame, reproach, um, uh, abuse, things that have weighed her down. Yeah. She dropped them, broke that chain, mm -hmm. and they went back to see the abusers face to face. Wow. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said everybody in the city followed her. Mm -hmm. Everybody, then including the men that rejected her, okay. the men that divorced her, the people that abused her, the people that have done trodden her, and just name it, on and on it goes. Yes. Everybody. Yeah. The Bible does not lie. Yeah. And they came to Jesus. They came to, yeah, they came to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then I began to think, why didn't Jesus say, because like me now, if somebody come to me now and said, I'm having trouble staying married, yeah. and or I'm living with somebody that is not married to me, I want the person to marry me, yeah. and he doesn't want to, and then the power is in my hand. What do I do? Okay, which man do you want? <laughs> and he will point, she will point that, and I will say, okay, I decree you married, and you're not gonna be separated mm. again. Because Jesus has all the power, of according course. to the Bible, he's God sure. himself. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, but Jesus didn't even talk about that. Jesus didn't even, even reconcile her to her former husband. Yeah. Neither did he even ask her, bring your boyfriend and I, get, I, married, I will marry you so that you stay married. Yeah. No. But the Bible made us to understand, yes. with that word, Jesus told her, she went back and she was empowered. I saw myself in that. Oh, wow. I now say that I am a woman of the well. Mm. I am wow. going back to wow. empower other women, mm. whether married, not married, divorced, single parent, enough of the stereotyping, yeah. enough of the stigma. Yeah. You can still be whatever you God has made you to be mm. yeah. without any man, mm. as long as you believe. The woman didn't go back to her former husband, mm -hmm. but yet she became the first evangelist. Oh, she wow. saw herself, and the, you know, before Jesus commissioned the disciples like Paul, Peter, James, and all the rest of them, Jesus has died. And even when Jesus died, mm -hmm. he said, stay on the upper room. Don't do anything or the Holy Spirit comes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's in Acts 2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, if you go, they might kill you. You won't be able to let the power come on you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they were not allowed. But this woman, Mm. was I I think was supposed to be the forerunner of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Mm. But because she was in the wrong place, mm. minding the wrong purpose, when you were in the wrong purpose, everybody can abuse you. Mm. Yeah. Take advantage. Isn't it? Take, take advantage, advantage of you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody can do you whatever because you are in the wrong place. Mm. Yeah. That's why she was able to even begin to do her job before Christ died. Nobody preached, nobody delivered, nobody went to evangelize. So can I ask? A, yeah. a yes, you can ask a question. You see, what you're doing now is spiritual. It's Christian based. Yeah. Okay. So how are you, how is this impacting the community okay. that we, you live in? Okay. Now, what I'm doing is not Christian based. The okay. inspiration comes yeah. from the Bible. Yeah. Okay. But Jesus was from entirely a different religion, and she was entirely from a different religion. Okay. But Jesus said, come to me. Mm -hmm. Like, give me to drink. In other words, let's have something in common. Mm. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So it doesn't really matter where you're coming from. Okay. Yeah. And uh, is, Jesus didn't say power or whatever. It was just, I'm hungry. Mm. So we look for those who are hungry. Okay. It doesn't matter where you are. Can, can, can I add to basically what he's trying to say is, in regards to the women that are on mm -hmm. the charity right mm -hmm. now, which is, mm -hmm. um, what, what projects do you do within those in order to impact the community? Do you, you know, do you, what do you do? What activities do you do? Oh, yeah, we, <laughs> we, I think I invited you in some, um, one of our 
endless possibility networking event okay. where we got the um, um, what's it called doctors um, lawyers people from um, different um, skill um, skillful people to come mm. and teach and educate the women okay. Okay. people that write books and the, all the rest of it but yeah. currently yeah. why we empower the women is that we get them to tell their stories yeah mm. and I tell my own story mm -hmm. if you um, have failed have failed Mm. Single parent, I have been. Barren, I have been. Mm. And I am what I am now. Of and course. if I can do it, you can do it. Definitely, you can do it. So, and if you, okay. Yeah. So, so basically, these women are women who they are work. underprivileged. Is that they? Are they do they have like um, different types of illness or anything, or they just, you know, different women um, with different backgrounds. Every woman has a story. Of course. Therefore, every woman is a woman of the world. You. Every woman, when we say women are the world, we are not talking about Christian people. The Bible yeah. didn't call the woman the woman are the world, remember? Yeah. You say the Samaritan woman. Yeah. But when we talk about women are the world, women are the world, like women of wisdom. We know wisdom. Women that has experiences and the backgrounds. Yeah. Mm. We, women that, and what do we give? We give water. What's the, the content of a well? Well of water. Of mm. water course. refreshes. Yeah. Water empowers. It does. Water energizes. Water cleans, water washes, water um, 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 makes you beautiful and of course, smells yeah. fresh. Of course. Thank you. And at the same time, water has no enemy. Yes, it doesn't. So we give you exactly what we need to give you to empower you to become what you want to become. Yeah. And we are over 200 women. Mm. This is what we need. So, and over from 200 all backgrounds, women. Wow. white, black, green, yellow. Mm. Um, wow. Red. We and different from, backgrounds and races as well. Race, yeah, exactly. Oh, good. So when we see you mm. and uh, um, we look at you, we, we try to um, merge you with somebody from your religion, if that's what you want. Mm. Some And if you like, for instance, you want to be a doctor. Of course. Mm. Thank you. We give you a mentor who will tell you what it takes. Mm. And if you're interested, we'll help you. And wow. we listen to your story. We, another thing that we do as well, we try to make you write down your story. When you write it down with your consent, if you want to turn it into a book, we give you the um, ability to, ability do, so, to yeah. do that and mm -hmm. you turn your story to so that because so that like people will be now, so people will be impacted in regards to yeah, the stories I've got, because yeah, I've everyone got a here. couple of ladies that have written their story. Oh wow. Yes. And yeah. I've got a couple of ladies that are coming from drug background, not just ladies, men. I also yeah. do a show that mm. we go to television every mm. Saturday to talk about our story. Yeah, that's why I mean that, that by the underprivileged, mm. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So helping people that have had um, substance abuse, and, yes, you know, yes, yes, yeah. and um, they could not get themselves back together, but the women at the well then provide yes. different types of activities, activities that helps these women get them back to, to yeah, normal yeah, so yeah. that they can be the, who they want to be. The, yes, yeah. the first well, thing we yeah. do, do you want to say? Life is really full of challenges yes yeah. so if you face a particular kind of challenge you may be able to deal with it and get at the other side mm. but when that challenge weighs you down so low that you cannot basically rise up that's similar thing what your organization exactly. comes in to okay. give yeah. a helping hand to lift people up yes. isn't yeah. it what, yeah. is we, we, because Everything you're passing through, we want yeah. to make you understand that mm. you are not lonely. It's not a mm. lone journey. Yeah. Somebody has been there. Mm. And at the same time, it's not peculiar to you. Yes. And if somebody has been through that and had a turning point mm. and come out of it and is fulfilling purpose now, yes. we empower you to. You two can do it. And yeah. so many people, when they see, hear your story, Mm. They are empowered. They are empowered. Yes. 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 And, and if you look at, like, um, um, what's it called? Quran. Yeah. Today, the Bible. Yeah. Some other book, especially biographies. Mm. What is this talking can, about? Can I say something mm. as well? Okay. I'm so happy that you're being inclusive. Mm. Because most of the time you see these projects, it's only geared into one religion. No. But right now you're actually including every religion, yeah. which is great. So I think that's one of the positivity you've got within yeah. women's world. Carry on. <laughs> yes, yes. That's, uh, yeah, you know. Yeah, all it's very good. It's all about telling you mm. the heroes of faith, of yes. your faith. Yes. What they've been through, 
how they were able to stand, yeah. how they overcome, mm. and what the victory was. Mm. Yeah. And they're also telling you, in case you face something like this, yeah. be strong, be it will come to pass. Mm. Because Definitely. somebody has faced it, mm. therefore, you are facing it now, mm. it's not unique to you. What we are doing is to, in our own, so so many people, they will read something like Bible, Quran, they say, oh, we in, you know, those, uh, is never in this world, somebody mm. wrote it. But no, mm. we are the one telling the story, I've been through it myself. Mm. Okay, yeah. before we finish, mm -hmm. um, because we still got a couple of minutes to carry on anyway, um, mm. can you please, you know, promote your business and tell the audience, you know, how would they join the Women of Well? Yeah, um, how you join Women of the Well is, um, we on Facebook, as um, our group page is Women of the Well. Mm -hmm. We have a page as well on Facebook, Men and Women of the Well. You can also call me on 078 614 and they speak to me directly. You can get um, on WhatsApp group, that's our WhatsApp group number. You can WhatsApp me, we will talk about it, we will chat about it. You can go to our website, www.thewomanatthewell.org.uk. Those are the places you can get us. I forget, um, our Instagram is W A T W Global. You will get us as well. In any of um, these uh, media spaces, once you get in touch, we will um, give you a call. You can as well go through Nikki and uh, she will bring you to us. Definitely, I yeah, will do. Because we are open <laughs> to everyone. Okay. Thank you very, very much. Um, let's go back to Chief Alex. Please I would me. also want you to tell the audience in regards to any organizations that want to join CIC or the other deputy leadership you're, you're in charge sure, of. Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, if anybody or organizations uh, would like to join Council of Igbo Communities in the UK CIC, um, they can contact me personally. Um, my number is 0777-122-3370. Or they can reach us through our secretariat. They can also contact our secretary, um, Efuru Oboa, uh, possibly on the same number. Um, but the other point I wanted to mention as well. <laughs> yes, as, please, as if you can I add. Do, as what I do for my living. Um, <laughs> yes. I, I'm a, a property, uh, a commercial lawyer. I specialize in real estate transactions here in the UK and in the US. And um, in the US, I'm in Atlanta. Okay. So um, if people would like to have a bespoke property services, they want to buy here uh, in the UK or anywhere in Europe or in the USA, I can also be of help to them. Uh, and you can, you can also contact me on, on the same number. Uh, and I just give you the number one more time. It's 0777. One two two double three seven zero, or by email. A C E T R I N I T A S at protonmail dot com. That is is trinitas at protonmail dot com. Thank okay. you, Nikki. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, you know, um, Jessica. Um, you know, I've just heard about all the stories you've just told us, and then it's been so inspiring. And I'm happy that you've come from like you know having difficulties, and you've actually stepped up and and become who you are right now, being sure. a pastor and leading and being part of leadership, and that is very very fantastic. And um, thank you so much for coming, That's you know, right. Pastor Jessica <laughs> Edmund. It's, it's, it's been a pleasure to have yeah. you. Yeah. Um, can I also say thank you, Chief Alex, 
for telling us about CIC and also all the other areas you do cover and, and I know that you're a great leader and as we follow you and continue to follow you as you progress as um, an able leader. Thank you so much for coming to this program. Thank you right. very much. Thank you um, very much, Nikki. <laughs> thank you so thank much. You. So this is Center Point Africa with Nikki. As we progress this program um, is centered on education, international politics, domestic politics, um, community development, and many more. Um, I would like to say there are um, other things that we're actually focusing on as well. We have a, a gentleman who, uh, Tarila Thompson, who is a great director, and there's a film coming out, and then the film is really fantastic. But I'll talk about this next time, but, um, Center Point Africa. My name is Nikki Emilike, CEO of Nisting College. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please carry on tuning in every Thursday, 3 to 4 p.m. as we continue this progress. Thank you very much, Nikki.